morning, everybody. This is podcast 9.5, and we're going to start looking at the process of protein synthesis now. And this is all still based on a DNA template. Uh, and we know that protein is how our genes are expressed. So there's a protein um, in my body from my genes that make my eyes a greenish hazel color. Uh, your protein might be a little bit different. It might be similar based on what your genetic code is. Uh, and what it gets down to is that DNA is not the only genetic material. Okay, there are other uh, proteins, or not proteins, I'm sorry, polymers in your body that contain genetic material that are based on DNA. And this chemical, this polymer is called RNA. And we've mentioned this in the past, but there's two major differences. RNA is a single strand, not a double. It is still a helix. So while DNA, <clears throat> excuse me, is a double helix, so if we're sketching it, okay, there's one strand, sorry. <clears throat> Man, my voice is going crazy. And then this would be its complement strand, and we've seen that. They kind of twist around each other. RNA is a single helix. So it's just this single strand going on and on and on, and it kind of corkscrews around itself. And instead of thymine in the code, instead of T in the code, it uses a chemical called uracil, and we show that, show that with a U. So wherever a T would be, there's going to be a U now in the RNA strand. Uh, RNA, okay, ribonucleic acid, is made from a DNA template. So in order to make RNA, you have to have DNA. So it's, DNA is still the, the main portion of the code. And the first kind of RNA we're going to look at is called messenger RNA. And just like the name implies, it's going to be sending a chemical message. And so to abbreviate this, we just call it mRNA or MRNA. So this one is sending something or it's coding or it's sending a signal or it's taking a chemical signal from DNA to something else. And transcription is the process where DNA is coded into mRNA. So uh, like in history class, we're talking... Um, the, uh, the Enigma machine, the Enigma coding machine from World War II. It would take a message, a coherent message, and then code it into something else. mRNA and DNA kind of do the same thing. We use a DNA template, that's the information, then we code it into the mRNA. And the enzyme that reads the DNA code to make something new is called RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase. So in science, we like to be very obvious. We don't uh, like to come up with these real enigmatic or real you know, crazy names for things. We just say what it does. So the, the RNA polymerase is a enzyme that polymerizes or makes an RNA polymer. So I've got a sample DNA code here. And so there's gonna be an animation on top of this. So I just want you to watch for a minute. Uh, remember that DNA always goes in a three prime to five prime direction. And then there's an anti-code or an anti-strand or an anti-parallel strand that runs backwards. So this one is three prime to five prime. And just like DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase has to read in a three to five direction. So we're going to be coding this top strand up here. Okay. Um, so what happens is there's there's no helicase in this kind of polymerization. Um, the RNA polymerase itself can open up the strand and then close it back up as it goes. So we're not going to worry about that at all. But we're going to be focusing on this top strand right here, highlighted on your screen, uh, because that's the 3 to 5 direction. So what happens is RNA polymerase finds a gene. So it finds a section of DNA that has some information that needs to be changed to RNA and it attaches and it starts moving in a three to five direction and out behind it has the RNA and it's being produced in a five to three direction. So it's the anti-strand, okay? Uh, so as the polymerase moves along, it pops that DNA open and then it spits out the counterpart. That mRNA strand is the important piece. So now we're gonna go ahead and draw this. What happens on the DNA so we'll use blue for this polymerase. So we've got, and it reads a few at a time, you know, as it's chugging along. But what we're focusing on is this top half right here. Okay, I'm interested in the three to five direction. So out behind it, 
is a new mRNA strand. And this is a five prime, and then it's producing at the three prime end, and it's moving this direction. Uh, and the coding is very, very easy to do. It's extremely similar to DNA coding, but you gotta remember, wherever we see a T, we have to substitute a U in there because there is no thymine in RNA. So our new mRNA code strand, right, we're reading the top strand right here. So whatever pairs with G, that's a C. Okay, another G, we've got a C. Now here's an A, all right? Remember, in A, it would usually pair with a T, like in DNA, but this T is now a U. Okay, so I did that in red to kind of highlight it. T doesn't change. A T in a DNA will code for an A in mRNA. Uh, and if you're observant, you're noticing that this mRNA strand is similar to the complement DNA strand. Okay, so if you're looking at a code here, all right, my first letter is a C. Okay, that's the same as the DNA. Another one is a C. That's the same as the DNA. Wherever I have a T, I need a U. And so I'm going to have you fill in the rest of the strand, and then we'll check it in class to make sure everything's right. But remember, wherever we see a T, okay, wherever we need a T, so let me rephrase this. If you need a T, substitute uracil or a U. So be careful about that. Uh, and the last thing is that all of this happens in the nucleus. Okay, all of your DNA is contained in the nucleus and it stays in the nucleus because that's where it's safe. It's, it can't really be digested by anything in the cell and it, it just kind of hangs out. So this diagram is a little bit better on your paper. My, my screen got messed up a little bit. But so all of this is happening. Here's your nuclear membrane on the outside here. And what we've got then is here's your DNA, your double helix is unwinding a little bit, and the mRNA polymerase comes in and it starts making this new RNA strand. And here's your template. Okay, this is the template. And then the new mRNA strand is produced. Okay, so the newly formed mRNA right here. And then that moves to the outside of the nucleus. So we're going to be talking about in the next step, and that's called translation. So once we've transcribed the code, transcription, from DNA to mRNA, we have to translate it into something meaningful. So uh, if you feel like you got stuck at any one point, there's going to be an animation or two posted on the website. You can take a look at those. But um, otherwise, flag me down in class, and we'll be talking about it more there.